Hello, John. Good afternoon, John. Debbie's here with us. Uh, we are live on the live feed, and uh, you've got three cases, I think, all assaults. Theodore Hirla, Garrett Whitmore, and Andrew Hamilton. Nobody's here yet except us. We got Hurley up. Let me see how this is spelled. It's Harila. We got it spelled wrong on our sheet. It's H E R I L A. Debbie, it was good to get one case off the uh, jury queue today with the Gary case. You got a dismissal on that one. So thank you. I did see that come through. So yes. Chipping away John, at that jury trial. John, have you had contact with this client? Mr. Harila? Yes. I talked to him on May 13th by telephone, sent him a letter telling him about the court date today. To the best of my knowledge, she lives in North Carolina. I was not aware of that. I did hear that he had moved out of state from our victim advocate who had heard it from the victim. So I'm not sure. I send the notices to Horseshoe, North Carolina. All right, well, okay. I think there's people in North Carolina that watch once in a while. Maybe they can go knock on his door. <laughs> go, go, go down the street. <laughs> And, uh, People of Horseshoe may know who he is. I'm only guessing it's not a very large community, but I don't know. Defendant moved to Horseshoe, North Carolina. When I got so many of these uh, last pretrials, we were just getting overwhelmed with them. I had started to set them in the 130 block, 130, 145, get a little bit of a head start, but that jams up Judge Pattison. So I directed Laura not to set any more 130 cases. Um, she will start at two. That interrupts your lunch hour and that's not fair to the attorneys or him. So we won't be starting till two once we work through these 130s. And if, as you know, I historically did all of these and he's now gonna do a percentage of them. So maybe we won't have so many, but we have a lot today. Deborah, was there a plea offer in this case? Well, if he were to show up, we were considering a disturbing the peace. Um, John, if you did have contact with him in May, 
perhaps you could try to reach him by telephone and see if we have any contact. Otherwise, I'm inclined to issue a bench warrant with a uh, 48-hour hold. It does look like we may have a $1,000 bond. Oh, I mean, he paid hundred dollars cash. Could it have been thousand ten percent? It must have been a thousand ten percent. Most people remember how much they paid. Yes. I'm gonna walk out and have my secretary try and call him right now. All right, yeah, and we have a hundred dollar bond. All right, thank you. We have a half an hour to kill. I guess that's not too bad. There's some tough cases in here today. A lot of assaulted ones. Judge, do you remember Ruth Shaw from Three Rivers? Yes, I do. I was talking to her this morning and she asked me, is Judge Milton the one with the long hair? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be unkind, but I thought she had passed. She's had, uh, some, she's had some health issues. Uh, your dad represented the that family. Yes, that, uh, that's how I way, happened. Way back, way back when. Yep. Uh, yeah, she's a fine lady. Um, well, I'm glad to hear she's still with us. I went to school with her kids. The Jack kids and stuff are all part of the family. Yeah, uh, that that part, that portion of the family. I guess those kids, the Shaw kids, would be her step kids. Yep. All right. Well, let's. Uh, sit here and contemplate things. Uh, while we're waiting, the next case is Whitmore. Was there any plea offer in that case, Deborah? On that one, it was as, as charged. We, we made a counter offer to you of disturbing the peace and your one of your predecessors said you would consider that for today. And I don't know if it was, not, it was not an offer, but said would look at that. I believe that was Casey, but I'm, not try. He, he didn't make it, but he said he would think about it. There's always room for negotiation, right? Have you had uh, victim input in that one, Deborah? No, the victim did not return a victim impact statement. I think that's what Casey said. And has not called or emailed. The case is quite old. Um, it happened in August of last year. She's on probation to autumn and she's in my specialty court program. I've never discussed this with her, but she hasn't gone anywhere. Maybe she doesn't care about it or I'm not sure how she feels about it. Well, we're in no man's land, <clears throat> no person's land. How about Andrew Hamilton? <clears throat> Is there an offer in that one? That one, we had offered DV first with no objection to a deferral, and he started to plead to it, but then changed his mind. So it's still open. That's accurate. He's not contacted me since that moment, so I'm not sure. He, for all intents and purposes, I, I thought he was all lined up to do that plea. We talked about it, what needed to be said. Yes, as I recall, we started to take the plea, and um, he, once we got into the nitty gritty of it, he decided he wanted to, uh, didn't want to plead at that point. So that's certainly his right. 
All right, we'll sit here and do I don't know what. I guess you guys can both go dark if you want while we wait to see if anyone shows up. It's, I'll find out what we find out in Harilia or Harilla. All right. Yeah, and on Whitmore, John, I would be hard pressed to change the offer. Mr. Harilia in my office called and we left a voicemail. All right. I've estimated my success rate by telephones about one in 20. And then you never know what you're going to get. We got some voicemail that was last week and then although yesterday i did wake a guy up for a probation violation and it was easier to at least contact him by telephone than issue a bench warrant and leave it out there all right well i'll stay here you guys can go dark and i'll click back in when somebody shows up that's fine. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Sorry for the dead air here, but it's easier to just leave it on and continue turning it on and off and arranging it.
Well, John, we're batting about zero right now. Uh, next is Worcester Whitmore, who's set at 145. I and expect him to be hooked up. I talked to him on the phone just like a okay. week ago. I, mean, I would be very surprised if he's not participating. Okay, good. The first whole batch of these are all domestic assault. Everything but one. Not a good day for assault. Deborah, if you'd like to speak to the complainant in that case, I can probably have Autumn arrange it. Um, well, it would be helpful.
I'll send you an email. No, Mr. Whitmore, either. Here's Mr. Hamilton. <clears throat> we can at least address him. <clears throat> He's early. Good afternoon, Mr. Hamilton. Can you uh, unmute your mic? Is that better? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you turn your camera on? Yeah, I'm working on that too. Good afternoon. This is Judge Middleton. Thank you for logging in a little early. <clears throat> We've got some others that haven't shown up. <clears throat> so we're kind of sitting here with some time. So let's just go right into your case. <clears throat> this is file 21598. It's entitled People versus Andrew Hamilton. Mr. Hamilton was charged with two counts of domestic violence. There was a plea agreement offered for a plea to a domestic violence with a deferral. We started the plea and Mr. Hamilton decided at least at that juncture he did not wish to enter a plea. Mr. John Bush is here on behalf of the defendant, Deborah Davis on behalf of the state. Uh, Mr. Bush hadn't had any further contact with Mr. Hamilton since that date. Mr. Hamilton, would you like a chance to talk to your lawyer here in private for a few minutes? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, John, I'll put you in a breakout room. Here is a news flash dated 
135-38. Governor Gretchen Whitmer today accelerated the end of all COVID-19 epidemic orders on gatherings and masking in Michigan. Michigan, as cases continue to plummet following increased vaccinations. Beginning June 22nd, <clears throat> capacity in both indoor and outdoor settings will increase to 100%, and the state will no longer require residents <clears throat> to wear a face mask <clears throat> as of June 22nd. I'm not sure what that does to the courts. I guess we'll wait till we hear from the state court administrator's office. I wonder if Gretchen Whitmer knows Garrett Whitmore. We get her to give him a call. Autumn hasn't answered my email yet, Debbie, so she's remote today. We'll see if he shows up. And we'll stop recording nothing.
Good afternoon, Mr. Wilkins. Thank you for logging in early. Um, you're in the right spot. Uh, we expect your attorney will be here in just a couple minutes. We're working on something else. So put you in the waiting room, but you're in the right place. Thank you. You're welcome. This must make for awfully boring viewing. That's pretty boring in real life. I don't have to miss anything. No one else has logged in.
when we shut things off like this, there's no way of predicting how long this is going to take. My preference would be the clients talk to their attorneys on their time rather than my time, but we do want to facilitate discussion. John, do you have an update? Yes, it, it's my understanding he's going to try and reinstate that plea. All right, give me one moment, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Wilkins. I brought you back in so you could uh, watch what we're about to do in another case. I'm gonna go through the advice of rights and discuss things with uh, this defendant. This okay. is file 21598, People versus Andrew Hamilton. Mr. Hamilton and I have met in the past. He, as far as I can tell, this is the first time he's ever been charged in a criminal matter, but he's been here as a plaintiff, I think, in some civil cases in the past. Good afternoon, Mr. Hamilton. As I told you last time, you're charged with two counts of domestic assault. It's alleged that on or about March 20th of this year, you assaulted Ashley Kasner. <clears throat> Those are misdemeanors. There's two counts, punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. My understanding is you're gonna plead to one of those two counts and the prosecutor is recommending that we put you in the domestic violence deferral program and not impose any jail at this point. Do you understand that if you plead to this charge, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury? Do you understand that? If you had a trial, you'd have the right to yes, sorry. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Mr. Bush has been appointed to represent you. You can also hire an attorney of your own choosing if you wished. If you had a trial, you'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court so they could be questioned under oath. You would have the right to take the witness stand yourself. And testify, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury cannot hold your silence against you 
and you'd have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. Did anyone promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No, sir. Or, thre or threaten you? No, now, sir. I don't know anything about this because there's no affidavit of probable cause. There's no bond information sheet. This was a warrantless arrest, apparently, and there's not much information. I did read the victim impact statement, and Ms. Kasner had apparently assisted you in your business and wishes us to lift the no contact provision. Uh, were you in a dating relationship with Ashley Kasner? Yes, sir. And were you together with her on March 20th? Yes, sir. And what happened? So that morning I had come in, I expected a really busy day. Uh, <coughs> I had stayed after the night before to make sure I had stuff ready to go. And uh, no, was this, this was at your place of business? Correct, sir. Which was what? Uh, Master Fit Auto. Okay. And um, so I was in back working on a truck and a customer had showed up to look at it. And Ashley had came in back to ask me what to do. I told her the truck wasn't done. And um, she then went up front and told them that it wasn't ready. And so they had left and they were gonna come back a little while later. When they showed back up, and it still wasn't done. And I'd also told her to keep the front door locked. At the time we had the pandemic thing going on, there's, um, you know, as far as letting people in and also I was trying to use that as a time to make sure that I can just control appointments. Because unfortunately I do get people that just stop and they have no respect really. And they just, I mean, I've had people pounding on my doors, my windows, they, it, it seems like they could control me and my business. And it seems like I don't have a set. So anyways, I had uh, asked for, I was trying to use it as time to just make appointments and not do so many walk-ins. And uh, well, she didn't feel comfortable then telling the customer it still wasn't quite ready. Um, at that point, I had a bunch of cars I was working on in back. And um, then basically she had just went and sat and didn't want to do anything. She wouldn't listen. Um, I was already overwhelmed with appointments and customers that I had trying to respond to on the phone. And so I told her she didn't help the customer or leave. And she wouldn't leave, she wouldn't leave, she wouldn't leave. She wouldn't help the customer, she wouldn't do it. She, then she just started staring off and wouldn't respond. Um, I said, I'll, like, I'll do whatever. I'll go sell the cars, I'll go, you know, I, I can only do so much here. And uh, at this point, the customer was outside and uh, just waiting, I guess, for the truck to be done. And uh, I couldn't get her to leave. I didn't want her to stay around if she wasn't gonna do anything or listen. And uh, so I did, I got stressed and I walked by her and I smacked her in the back of the head. It wasn't hard, I get it, I shouldn't have done it. Um, next thing you know, the, um, she's screaming super loud um, I looked at it as a way that she was trying to get the customer to leave and the customer took it to a whole different level. And that's when the police were called. Um, they showed up. I told them straight up what I did and I get it. They're forced to act based on what I said. So, all right. Well, she, she was your girlfriend. So she helped you in the store, but did she, was she an employee? No. So she's working for free. And on top of that, she gets smacked in the head. I think uh, the court should know. They also have two common children, I believe, Your Honor, just to yeah. understand the, the fact. Well, she wants to lift the no contact, and I would like to do that as soon as we can. I, Deborah, are you requesting that I set a 10-day notice? We have had contact with Ms. Kastner. Um, she has maintained that she wants the no contact lifted as well. Um, at this point, she is aware of what our offer was, and under the circumstances, if the court wants to go forward and sentence today, I have no objection to that. 
All right. Plead to count one, dismiss count two. Is there any uh, suggestions? I mean, is my only option really to like call the police when people just come and pound on my doors or windows or don't leave or just- I have a suggestion. To Hire some more help. I don't know what to tell you. I've never run a business, so I can't help you there. Um, you're right. You can only go so far and you got stressed. And have you ever been convicted of a domestic violence charge in the past? No, sir. I didn't see anything on your criminal record at all. I think this is the first time you've been charged with anything. I'm going to do a standard domestic violence probation for 12 months. You can be done in six months if you can get it completed. I'm going to order 11 days jail credit one, leaving 10 days to serve. Of the 11 days, 10 are deferred. All the additional jail days are deferred for your participation and cooperation with your probation agent. There's a $75 fine, $75 crime victim rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee, a $150 attorney fee, and a $480 probation oversight fee, and you're to pay for the anger management class. We're doing these now, I believe. We lost our longtime anger management instructor, Matt Pellerito, who did a, just an outstanding job, and I'm sorry he retired. Um, but we've got some other good providers. Let's add that total up. I don't have any bond money. 75, 50, 50, oops, 75, 75, 50, 150 attorney fee, uh, 480 oversight fee, which could be reduced by 240 if you do this in six months. Here's the deferral part. You're gonna do the anger management class. No assaultive or threatening behavior. You're abstained from alcohol and any controlled substance. This was not alcohol related, uh, but that's a standard condition of our probation. That includes marijuana. Uh, the no contact provision is lifted. I didn't realize you had children in common. Sir. This is March. That, uh, that was March. This is now June. You're not on bond anymore, Mr. Hamilton. You're on probation. You're dreading this right now, but almost everybody that I've put into this anger management program felt it was very beneficial and liked it almost to a person. If you hold up your end of the deal, this charge will be taken off your record as a public record of conviction. There will be no conviction and it won't affect your firearm rights. But for the time being, you're on this probation. Sooner you can complete the anger management class and that's not all your fault. We're having trouble getting classes full and getting them scheduled. So I think we're about ready to fill one and start it. But I expect you to hold up your end of the deal and have this charge taken off your record. Uh, the probation department will be contacting you. Is the five nine five five nine three last four numbers? Is that phone number correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. They'll contact you at that number. We'll get started on your probation. Do you have any questions? Um, with the uh, class, the anger management classes, the counseling will account as that. Then, if there is issues. Um, is that gonna with that, if if there's issues with the class getting in and whatnot, is like counseling sessions or anything like that count, or is that completely different? They may be able to comp, uh, comp, to uh, facilitate something else. Discuss sure. that with your probation agent if we need to. We can make a further record on it. Yeah, you know, I wanted to confirm his mailing address. Uh, I'm using 401 East Chicago Sturgis. 
Yeah, I just have everything sent to my business, so that way when I go through all the mail, it's all in one spot. All right. Very good. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I'll let you go. Thank you, Mr. All right. Good luck. All right. Nora and TJ are here, but let's wrap up our other matters. Mr. Harila has not appeared to a bench warrant, bond, $2,500 cash or surety, 48-hour hold, if you do contact him. Also, Garrett Whitmore is a disappointment. He has failed to appear. Uh, same thing. Although this is an assault and battery, I'm going to do a $500 bond. Bench warrant. That's file 2017 hour hold. And again, that's the one that surprised me. I just talked to him. Well, if you can get him in here, John, I'll be here all afternoon and we'll cram it in. Otherwise, I'll hold this for two days. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, all right. Uh, Nora Geiger from the Branch County Prosecutor's Office has joined us. Timothy Reed is here and his client, uh, Josh Wilkins, is here. Mr. Wilkins checked in early. I brought him back into the courtroom so he could just see what we were doing and see the plea being entered in the other case. Uh, the local prosecutor, Ms. Davis, does not have input on this case. Um, the St. Joe County Prosecutor's Office was disqualified. I think Mr. Marvin may have represented the defendant at some point. And Branch County has graciously agreed to uh, take this on. Nora, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. After a while, all the Dave Marvin defense attorney cases will be worked out and he will have been prosecutor long enough that all those conflicts will have evaporated. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Reed. I know you were on the other side as well. Yep. Mr. Wilkins has been waiting here patiently. Let's go through what we've got here. File 2135SM alleges child abuse in the fourth degree here in St. Joseph County on April 3rd of 2020. And that took a long time to get up and rolling. We had to get a special prosecutor and all that stuff. And uh, then we had a change of attorneys. Anyway, that's from last year. Then there's a new charge, 21843, which is alleged to have occurred on February 25th, which um, is also a child abuse in the fourth degree charge. And then when that happened, we backed up and decided to take a look at everything we had and reset the last pretrial. So thank you all for being here. Ms. Geiger, I'll defer to you. What's our current status? I had previously made an offer in this case. Well, I had an offer before the new case was charged of a plea to an assault and battery. Um, and then we had the new file. My, my inclination is to, still to offer the assault and battery with a dismissal of the, a plea to one of the files to an assault and battery with a dismissal of the other one. And I apologize to the court. I hadn't had a chance to reach out to Mr. Reed previous to this court date um, to discuss this case earlier with him. Um, but that is the, the offer at this point. One count of assault and battery and dismiss all their charges. <coughs> all right, uh, Mr. Reed, do you, what's your position on that? You just heard it, so you have a chance to talk to Mr. Wilkins about it? Yeah, I'd like to talk to my client. Um, well, that's certainly understandable. Uh, Mr. Wilkins, I'm gonna put you in a breakout room here. Okay. <coughs> um, the next case, Mr. Moran has showed up, and so if Lori Hines comes, we can go right into that one. We'll be right back in. We'll get in there. And then I may want to talk to Nora real quick um, after that. So, but thank right, you, Your whatever, Honor. Whatever you need. All right, Mr. Wilkins, I'm going to set up a breakout room. You're going to have to agree to join it. Let me close the other ones. I see that everything lifts come Monday. So we're good to, on the 22nd. So we're good to go, right? Apparently. Um, yeah, I just got it at 138. Yeah. 
Good I'm news. Not, I, frankly, I don't know what that means for the courts. I guess we'll wait to hear from SCAO. But <laughs> there's a jury trial that's supposed to start next Tuesday in the circuit court. I saw that. So I'll be interested to see. All right. We're going to join. All right. <clears throat> Nora, are you doing things live in Branch County? We um, are doing our hearings, um, such as preliminary exams um, down in probate court. I do a lot of our hearings. They're all in person. I had heard um, probate, probate was in person the whole time, but uh, have you had a jury trial yet? No, um, my first jury trials were scheduled to start next week, but I was told yesterday afternoon that we had a spike in numbers. And so we had to cancel our jury trials set for next Wednesday. Um, we have some scheduled for the following Wednesday. So I'm just kind of waiting to see if we actually do one. Those would be in district court? Yep, in district court. Right. Keep your people on the Branch County side of the line. Our numbers here are almost down to zero. I know okay. there's a lot of concern about the Delta variant and what that might do to the numbers and also as summer ends. But um, it, the, our problem is it takes us several weeks to get the jurors all lined up. So mm -hmm. I think we'll get that process started. I'm gonna yeah. bring in our next defendant who is set for 2.30. Okay. Mr. Moran, could you unmute your mic? If you could put me in with Miss Geiger into a All break. Right. I need to close. Josh, I'm going to put you in the waiting room. Okay. Some manipulating to do. And I need to I think I need to close it all the way around. So give me a second. Every time I try to play fast and loose with it, I end up with problems. So let's just start from scratch. All right, I'm gonna put the prosecutor with the special. And Mr. Reed, I lost EJ, I think I kicked him out. Sorry about that, TJ. All right. I told you I started to have problems when I, I might, I'm not sure what I did, but let's try this again. Timothy Reed and Nora Geiger. Okay. Mr. Moran, can you hear me? You need to unmute your mic. Little red button down in the corner. There you go. Mr. Moran, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to put you in the waiting room along with Mr. Wilkins. Uh, we're waiting for your lawyer, Ms. Hines, to log in. We expect to hear any minute, all right? Okay. Uh, you're good. I can hear you. I can see you and you can hear and see me. We should be ready to go in just a moment.
Debbie Laurie is here now. Good afternoon, Laurie. Hi, John. How are you? Good. Mr. Uh, Moran is here, your client. TJ and uh, the special prosecutor are in the breakout room talking, and we might as well just jump into this one. It is set for 2.30, and it is 2.30. Uh, this is file 202241. It's entitled People versus Joshua Moran. Uh, it alleges a domestic assault or domestic battery way back last September 29th. The defendant has alleged that he assaulted his spouse, Christy Moran, who he had a child in common with. It's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Uh, I'm not completely clear on how this got so old. Um, the defendant got arrested. He didn't get arrested for one thing until March of this year. Um, Deborah, what's our status here? Your Honor, I have made an offer to Ms. Hines. Okay. Your Honor, I tried calling my client. He is not, he called when I wasn't in, left a message. I called for him. He didn't answer his phone. He called back and left a message and I had two NA hearings upstairs. So I did not get to talk to him. If you Let's could just- Let's wait just, well, I didn't open two. So as soon as TJ returns, I'll close that and put you and Mr. Moran in a breakout room. Um, Yeah, this is old. Um, he, Mr. Moran did do a DV deferral in the past. My recollection is he successfully completed it. So he's not eligible for another deferral. Um, but to his credit, he did do what I asked him to do the first time. All right, we have to wait for TJ. They're discussing fishing and working on other things there. Mr. Moran, I'll put you in the waiting room again while we wait for the other attorneys to come back so I can put you in the breakout room. I would right now, but I, I only have one room open. So when I, every time I try to do more than one, I get off track. Uh, is it, this is your only case today, isn't it, Lori? I have Felicia Slater. Oh, yes, that's there's a big bunch of that. Yeah, have you had contact with her? Um, I have been having consistent contact, and then I tried calling her number today when um, Debbie and I conversed by email just to confirm what we were going to do, and then her phone rang busy. So, well, she she um, missed some court hearings, I've got some show causes to do. She had some other traffic cases and she didn't show up. Rather than issue a bench warrant, I set them for a show cause when I knew that she was supposed to be here for now. So hopefully she'll show She's up. She's been pretty good about keeping in contact with me. I've got notes in the file that I've talked to her. I, her address is good, so I have an email address for her. Um, and right. now I don't know why her phone number's not working. Yeah, I better get those out. I set those aside because there were so many of them. I forgot you had that, Lori. I set those cases aside. Okay, and then one of them is a special prosecutor case, so you got to remember that Ryan Fink is going to be signing in, and you know that was um, a day he was supposed to do sign in when we the court lost power. Do you remember that? Yes. So these all got reassigned. A little more age on these. Yes, we're sitting here trying to do what we could do. In the old days, when I had Ken, my stenographic reporter, when the power went out, I would open a window and do it, or we went on a picnic table once and did some court business. Uh, but, you know, those days, 
we didn't have everything wasn't computerized. We had paper files and a stenographic court reporter, and um, we could do things remotely more easily, at least some things. Do you remember those days, Debbie? Or were you still in diaper? Oh, well, they weren't born. Yeah. She wasn't born yet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. She's, would... she's tired of hearing that. Yeah. You know, a long time ago, before you were born, this is how we did it. Yeah, the young lawyers love hearing that from old guys. I only remember Ken when I was doing my externship. I don't think he was there when I started practicing law. So You would remember Ken. He's, you know, you know Ken now. Or I do memorable. remember Ken yeah, so I did my externship to the prosecutor's office. And his office is where our attorney lounge used to be. And I, he used to come and chat with me a lot. But I don't remember. I think he left by the time I did my externship and when I actually started practicing law. So, Well, when I first started, here we go again, uh, the court reporter in the circuit court wrote with a pen in Greg's shorthand and he would get mad if your opening or if your closing argument took too long. He would he want to wow. write it all down. Your Honor, did you get that email from John Bush about Whitmore? Let's take a look. No. I got a number for you. Did she forward that to you for the, oh. I've not gotten anything. I'll forward it to you. But Whitmore's no. in custody in Indiana. Oh, he's in custody in Indiana. I checked Indiana my case, and he has a felony pending from the something that happened on the fourteenth, and the hearings were yesterday. So unless okay. he has bonded out, well, which... I'm still going to do a bench warrant. But all right, so per Deborah Davis, what county is he in? Um, Lagrange County. That's where the charges are. And actually, reverse a little bit, on 6-4 of 21, he was charged with a felony down there as well. So things are not going so hot for him in Indiana. Maybe he shouldn't have left state in violation of his bond. Yes. That's what happens. <sighs> How are the goats? They still live it? Yeah, man. Like That's keeping awesome. them alive. <laughs> They're very cute. How did the one that uh, survive its ear surgery? She's still kicking along. So we be able to show her. Is yeah. she show quality? I mean, she's of course she's show quality. She's one of our animals. But no, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, when you got to yeah. that, you can't show them. Right. So fortunately, I think we're going to be all right. It's just going to have a scar, but not a huge deal. Uh, just fluff it up, put some yeah, like, yeah. on it. Yeah, Mr. Whitmore. Well, we're not moving very fast, Lori. We've had about five cases. We did accomplish one plea. And Sorry. I apologize if I'd known what I know now, I would have opened two breakout rooms. And uh, is he still um, just in the waiting room? You just have him yes. still in the waiting room? Yes. Okay. I could close the breakout room on TJ and. Uh, Nora, do we have a 245? Yes, Felicia Slater, Your Honor. Oh, so yeah, that's next. She's not here. So I better expedite things here. Let me close the room. And if they need to continue to talk, I'll just open two.
Mr. Moran, I'm bringing you back so I can facilitate putting you in a breakout room with your attorney. We need to wait about a half a minute here. Okay. I'm sorry to cut you short. I didn't know if you were finished. I can put you back in no. there, but I need to open we, another room. We are, Your Honor. And I, we're going to ask this to be reset for another last pretrial in like two weeks. Um, we kind of, I think we're in the right, moving in, in a good direction. I think Ms. Geiger wants a little time and I want a little time with my client on a couple of things, but I think we're ultimately going to come to the right resolution here. and get. Give me just a moment. I'm going to put Joshua and Lori in a breakout room and then we'll have a little more time to discuss this. You want me to bring Mr. Wilkins back in? That's, that's fine, Your Honor. All right. Uh, we are turning to files 202135 and 21843, People versus Joshua Wilkins. And Mr. Wilkins went back into the waiting room. Let me bring it back. There he is. All right, Mr. Wilkins, your lawyer and the prosecutor have been discussing this at some length. Uh, this matter is complicated. But we did note that, <clears throat> here's my note page. There it is. Uh, Mr. Reed, why don't you go ahead and say what you're about to say? Sure, Your Honor. Ms. Geiger had made an offer today, and I talked to Mr. Wilkins about it. We had countered back with an offer to Ms. Geiger, and her and I had an opportunity to discuss kind of my thought process and a pitch to, to her on, on a resolution. Um, I believe that a two week adjournment and have us come back for another la attorney pretrial with Your Honor gives both of us an opportunity to kind of uh, explore some of the options and the respective offers that were made. I think we're on the right track. Um, I can report to the court that Mr. Wilkins and his wife are participating and cooperating with Darcy Bordner of um, is the ongoing child protective services worker in the home. So there's also some input there that um, I know I, I'm going to seek a little bit more input from her as well as Ms. Geiger has that resource to, um, to see if we can come to a resolution that, fits the needs of justice, but also helps his family move forward from this. All right, give me a moment. Let's pull up that calendar day. And obviously, Ms. Geiger, if you have some other stuff, we can be, it doesn't have to be exactly two weeks. I, I'm not sure what, since it sounds like you're so strong over there in Branch County that you may be a little shorthanded. <laughs> two weeks from today would be July 1. Um, we have, a, let's see what we got. I'm available all afternoon on July 1. I actually have a hearing with St. Joe County Circuit Court at 1.30 that day on one of my other cases. <laughs> oh, good for you. <laughs> Not mine, is it? I don't think I have you on any. I don't problem. believe so. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's set this for 2 p.m. Well, I'll tell you, you what, 2.15. 2.15, okay. Does that give you enough time, Ms. Geiger? As long as I'm done with circuit court. <laughs> and, I, and I will tell you, I'm totally fine with waiting around because I have then a, looks like a, a 3.30 with the court that day anyway. So I'm going to be in, in the way, I'll be here all afternoon that day. Thursday, July 1 at... 215 parties continue to work towards settlement. Is it possible to get the no contact order lifted? I've missed his birthday and a bunch of other stuff. That was something that Ms. Geiger and I did discuss around. I don't believe they did, but at this point we are trying to get the no contact order lifted and would like to
Let's go with 230. I have an opening in there. Okay. Well, 230 works. Uh, I was going to cram it in with something else, but this will work. Uh, Mr. Wilkins, that's one of the reasons why I don't want to continue to delay this. Two weeks yeah. is, is about as far as I'd like to go. But bear in mind, you were on a bond on a child abuse fourth, and you got charged with another child abuse fourth while on bond. So I want to know what's going on from CPS and any potential plea agreement before I make any decision regarding the bond conditions. So I think your lawyer uh, was on top of that. I know it's frustrating. I had a guy this morning who's been like a year. Uh, all right. Uh, it's continued to Thursday, July 1 at 2.30. And Your Honor, can you put me into a breakout room with Mr. Wilkins and then we will exit your meeting from there? Uh, uh, no, I can't because I got Lori in one. So let me Josh, see. Josh, I'll call you. I'll, I'll just give him a call. That's fine. All right. Okay. All right, Josh, I'll remove you. All right. Thank, thank you, Judge. I should have the presence of mind to open more than one room. <laughs> well, all right. Thanks. That Thanks, finishes Nora. you, TJ? Yes, it does. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, Your, Your Honor. All right. Uh, we'll reset.
Oh, okay. Honor, my client will enter a plea today. He's pretty emotional, so um, it's right. been kind of tough on him. He's not been able to see his kids since the date of this incident, so he's he's just really upset about it all. Well, that was in uh, last year. He didn't get arrested until March. He uh, said so he hasn't seen him since the date of this incident, though, Your Honor. So I mean, it's just it's just tearing him up, and so he's quite emotional. All right. Well, that's understandable. Mr. Moran, can you hear me? Yes, Your Honor. All right. We've met before, and I'm here again today. This is file 212241. It's alleged that on or about September 29th of last year, you and your wife, Christy, K-R-I-S-T-I, -I, had an incident, and you allegedly assaulted her. Uh you're going to enter a plea. What, what is the offer, Deborah? The offer is to plead as charged to the domestic violence first. It could have been charged as a second. All right. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Once we, oops, turn the record back on. This is file 202241, People versus Joshua Moran. Uh, he's charged with domestic violence, first offense, which could have been charged as a second offense. He's had an opportunity to meet in a breakout room with his attorney, Lori Hines. Attorney Deborah Davis was here from the prosecutor's office. The defendant is going to enter a plea to domestic violence, first offense. I'm going to set the matter for sentencing in an ex somewhat expedited uh, there's been a no contact provision, which prohibits contact with his kids. And uh, that's not good to leave something like that in place indefinitely without more information. Mr. Moran, this is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. It is a lesser charge than domestic violence second, which is punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. To understand that if you're going to plead to this charge, you will be giving up your right to have a trial. You understand? I do. All right. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Ms. Hines could uh, represent you, and she's on top of this. You could also hire an attorney of your own choosing if you wish. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to take the witness stand yourself and testify you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you. You would also have the right to have any of the witnesses against you subpoenaed to testify. And they could be questioned under oath. And you have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Now let's go back and I'll look at this affidavit of probable cause. Uh, you and Christy were, uh, better, a better word, separating, and uh, your stepson, Caden, uh, I think he actually called the police. Uh, tell me what happened. On that day, I took in presents over to my daughters. I have been trying to get more time with my kids. There is nothing set up through the courts because I can't get a divorce. I've tried and tried to get a divorce as far as. Why can't you get out. Why can't you, is a divorce been filed? No, Christy will not give me the social security numbers of the kids that I was told by Miss uh, Hines herself. I need to get those social security numbers before I can pursue. All right. Well, I don't know about that, but okay. Um, all right. So you went over there. There was already discord. And the report says Caden saw you with your arms around her neck and uh, had to kind of break it up. 
What do you recall about that? Excuse me, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I had a call. All right. The, the report on. indicates that Caden said he went out there and saw you had your his mother, your wife, uh, up against the house and uh, your hands on her, and he had to uh, break it up. What do you recall about that? That day, there was a verbal altercation between her and I. She tried shoving me out of the fence. I held on to the chain link fence, not only one, to keep my balance, but two, to maintain my stance. I did not wrap her up as what is being stated. I merely kept a hold of the fence. She was trying to shove me out. Caden had took my glasses, sunglasses I had on my face, broke them, and then after that, he had taken the chain link fence itself because I had a hold of the bar, and he had squeezed it into my fingers that in return, yes, I had let him go of it. Well, what it says in the affidavit, and this is simply an affidavit, uh, Christy said she was upset because he was supposed to show up the previous night to see the kids, but did not show. The two began to argue and Josh became irritated. She attempted to walk inside to get away from the situation, but Joshua grabbed her and threw her up against the house and refused to let her go. Joshua then wrapped his arm around her neck and began to squeeze. She said that she was unable to break free from his grasp until Caden came out and pulled Joshua off. Then Joshua left in his mother's Josh uh, Dodge Nitro. Your Honor, she at that point in time, I was not allowed to have the Nitro because my mother had taken away my rights to using it because she thought that Christy had been driving it. Well, this was September of last year, so I don't know. All right, yes. but did you put your hands on her as described oh. there? No, well, did I'm you, a big did guy. If I was to put my hands on her, I could do a lot of damage. Right. I am not that guy. Oh, all right. Are you going to admit to a domestic battery? You have to admit to something. According to you, you didn't do anything. Um, there was contentions. a patient. I wholeheartedly admit that I did not allow her to just shove me out of the way. Well, did you push her back? As far as pushing back, if standing my ground is going to be resisting, yes. Deborah, what do you make of that? Is that an acceptable factual basis? It would appear there was an unwanted physical touch from him to her, from what they're saying. If he was asked to leave, didn't leave, if he's... Touching her in any unwanted way, I guess that would be sufficient for a factual basis for a domestic. Well, we barely got there. She says this is the fourth time she's called the cops for Joshua assaulting her. Joshua has assaulted her many more times, but she's been too afraid to call the cops and report it. According to his version, he barely did anything. And there's two witnesses that indicate he choked her. I was hopeful for a better factual basis than this. Uh, Lori, are you, uh, is that factual basis acceptable to you? Yeah, you also have to say too, the victim's rights in the police report, she, Christy stated she didn't want to speak to anyone about the incident. So, I mean, I find that contradictory as well, if she wants to report that. But my client well, did admit there was an altercation between them and he's not been able to see the kids. So, um, well, and right now it's all in her favor, there's a bond condition yep. that prohibits contact with the kids. He doesn't have any contact. They're still married. There's no divorce. And the and that's case why is you want to take responsibility right. and move on. I mean, it's been hurtful to him. You saw how emotional he was. It's yes. been very Lori, different. Are you, are you available on Wednesday, June 30th at 11? Um, I have that Sean Moore PV hearing with Judge Pattison at 10.30 to 11.30. I thought that was done. 
Oh, no. Well, don't worry about it because they let Sean Moore out of jail. Oh, I know. State. That's why we're having a hearing. Uh, they, and they, he hasn't been reapprehended yet, has he? No, he has not. Yeah, over the weekend, because he was supposed to be sentenced with you on Monday. Well, I talked to him on Friday, and he knew full yeah. well he was supposed to be there. But you somebody and I let talked him out. To him. Debbie was there. We got his whole file resolved. I closed and we were, it. Yes, we were going to take care of everything, and then he didn't oh. show up. All oh. right. And I, I still have, I, I don't know who did it. I sent an email over there and said, make whoever did it go get him. But, um, He's probably a sovereign citizen in his car. Well, I discouraged that. I said, don't go down that path. But, oh. all right, let's see what we got here. Do you have another date that you want to try to give me? Well, Governor, is this get, one where there's going to be a PSI? I think there's more. You think we need a full bone PSI? I, I think that would be best with all of these allegations of prior circumstances, not being permitted to well, see the kids, that sort of thing. Uh, all right. Well, he did do my previous probation. Uh, so he had a previous PO. I think it was autumn, but I'm not 100% sure. Who, Joshua, who was your probation officer when he went? I don't keep her. There you go. It was Autumn. And you were successful, Joshua? Yes, ma'am. Yes, he was. The problem is we get into vacations. Uh, Judge Patterson is going to be gone. And I'm going to be gone. Let's look. I don't, I don't want to. I could set it for... Thursday, July 8th. Hopefully that'll be enough time to get a PSI done. Is that acceptable to you, Lori? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. At 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Joshua, I think I, Joshua, I asked you this before. Were you related to John Moran? He's my uncle. Is he still living? He's got cancer living in LaGrange. That's the last I heard. Um, that I hadn't heard otherwise. He was a classmate of mine. Um, all right. DV first. Pre-sentence investigation. Autumn seven eight. That's a Thursday. That's a bit of an unusual time, but we'll make it work. I'm sorry. What time, Your Honor? Eleven a.m. Are you gone? Are you taking the month of July off again? Never have. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be home, but I can come. I can zoom in. All right. Joshua, I wish I could get this tomorrow, but there's, I can't. So we're going to go with July 8th at 11. Um, I don't know the nuances of domestic violence work, but um, I mean, domestic relations seems like a divorce ought to be in the offing if it's this bad. Are you working somewhere? Yes, sir. I'm working at uh, Cruiser RV in LaGrange. All right, that's good. I hear they pay a good wage there. They are. They're very good, me so far. Someone told me that it was the best company you ever worked for. So, all right. Uh, don't get any more trouble. Stay in contact with your attorney, and I will see you. On, the probation department's going to be contacting you regarding the preparing the report. All right, you're good to go. Now, as for Felicia Slater, She's not here once again. Oh. I'm losing my patience with her. It's like she like here one day, uh, not the next. All right. Well, here's what we got. Is in Ryan? Did he dial in, Your Honor? 
No, the, no one's here from Cass County yet. He was file two, two zero six nine four is a domestic violence second offense and driving suspended second offense that allegedly occurred on April 6th of 20. Then again in 2020, she got another domestic violence, I think on her sister, 20189. Her mom. Her mom. And that occurred on May 25th of 20. In file 202207, she has an assault and battery upon Justin Rife, which allegedly occurred on 9-5 of 20. So due to missed court dates and a bunch of other rigmarole, those things are all pending from last year. She continues to drive. In file 211117, she got charged with no insurance under the motor vehicle code. And 118, driving suspended second offense and 119 improper display of registration plates. She failed to show up for her arraignment on June 9th, and I tried to call her without success. Um, and rather than issue a bench warrant at that time, I did an order to show cause for today. And I'm not sure what's going on, but she has three assault cases, multiple driving cases, and now she's falling off the grid. I'm going to do a bench warrant on each of those OSC cases. Did Ryan Fink dial in, Your Honor? He has 20 694. I think it's Ryan Funk, actually. Funk, yeah, I think Funk. Uh, he's not here, but anyway, um, these are these show causes. $100 per file. I guess I have to hold 48 hours. So they'll That's issue in 48 hours? Well, that's not, I haven't gotten to the domestic violence cases yet. One is set at three, one is set at 315. And so maybe she, wait a minute, one is set at 245. Two were set so, at 245 and one is set at three. That's what my file still. And she isn't here on any of them. And, uh, I don't know what's going on. I, like I said, I tried to call her without success. Um, defendant FTA on all APT trials. Lori, at one point when she was here, she said she had been in jail in LaGrange County and that's why she had missed. Do we know if maybe she's back in custody there or? That could be, I don't know. I mean, my notes are extensive with her and I do have had a valid number for her for quite some time, which is always work. And she does call me from that number. So I don't understand why she's not here. Let me do a quick check. Meaning she was employed and uh, every time I talk to her, it's like, I'm at work, I'm on break, I'm talking to you. I mean, I just don't understand. She was here in May. I talked to her in May. I wanted to do a global deal and include all her cases that I had. And then one went to branch or a uh, cast county to prosecute and they're like no we don't want to be a part of that deal so um, i could have had them all resolved if they had just gotten on the bandwagon because i it was a decent offer she was going to agree to well it's a noble goal to try to resolve everything at once deborah any luck on it appears she might be in custody she has a possession of map case pending in Indiana from last June. And then there was some entries on it. She failed what? to appear on 
five. What county? It's in LaGrange County. So if you maybe call, have somebody call LaGrange County and yeah. see if oh, yeah. there. It looks like on Indiana, my case, Lori, that something happened on because she didn't appear on 517. So then 525, they did some sort of an order setting a bond compliance hearing for June 21st. All right. And so I don't know if that means that she got picked up down there and now they're having the hearing or... If they're hoping I do know she, she, called, she called the office on May 20th and then on June 2nd, and then we mailed the stuff to her on June 2nd. The problem is this case was set the day that the power went out and she was freaking out about not being able to log in. Um, you know, why didn't she go to court? And then like she fell off the grid again so and what oh, I don't and then she, well and then she got charged with possession of meth again in january of this year down there wow really things are really not going good for her in indiana either maybe her and garrett whitmore were hanging out or something i don't know he's my other one that was fta today and and they have the same thing on here that she didn't appear so they set another bonds because she had found it Morris, out. Morris yeah. checking your quarters is still on. Okay. Here's Christopher Whitman. Not sure who that is. He may be he's, an, a, he's an attorney. On the Wick on the nurse bomb case. All right. Felicia said her name was emergency. She asked to see my gun. Said her telephone number was nine one one. I can't is find it. Is this the song <laughs> I'm not familiar with? Come on, Lori. Probably, probably. it just popped she's in my head. She's not in the Lagrange County Jail. So I'm going to do, as I indicated, hundred dollar bench warrants. So I'm going to do three bench warrants on each of the assault cases. The five hundred dollar bond per case. 48 hour hold. She also hasn't failed to appear in Indiana on May 25th. Uh, on the 17th, she was failure to appear down there on two different felony methamphetamine cases, one from June of last year and one from January of this year. And they're still pending. Yeah, but there's no warrant out. That's what I thought. Kind of unusual that she's not in custody and they just set it for a hearing on june 21st so maybe she'll show up down there on june 21st crazy okay okay well, Lori, thank you for your patience yeah uh, i don't know parts. like i said she's been good about calling but i don't know now what's going on so I think the wheels fell off sometime in mid-May is what I think. No, she contacted us. She freaked out the day that we were supposed to have a hearing when the power went out. So we've oh. heard what there's since then, and we sent her notices again about the new hearing. So um, that was at the beginning of June. So since then, we haven't heard anything. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. We'll shift gears here to Mr. Nussbaum. Thank you, Lori. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. You work that Hi, Lori. Go Google it. Good afternoon, Mr. Wickman. Good afternoon, Your Honor. How are you? You're either out in the front parking lot of the office or you've got a nice virtual background there. Uh, I'm Judge Middleton. We're here in Centerville with Deborah Davis. Uh, your client's not here yet, Mr. Uh, Nussbaum. Um, 
And uh, do you guys, I'm sorry, go ahead. Your Honor, I do apologize. So my understanding, I thought that this was an attorney pretrial, so I can get a hold of Mr. Nussbaum. But last I knew, um, because we hadn't had him jump in the room, I don't think he was prepared to appear today. This matter, um, my understanding is we were going to set that for trial. The only uh, small caveat is we received the video last week, um, and there might be one final motion that we would file in advance of that trial, but otherwise I'm prepared to proceed forward. All right, why don't you bring your client in here? They do things differently in a lot of different jurisdictions. Uh, give him the login information and we'll bring him in. Okay, I'll call him right now, Your Honor. I'll turn myself on mute and off video. All right. I just sent you a message. So the link to the song? No. Just as an update, Your Honor, I have left him a voicemail and then I texted him the uh, Zoom room information. So hopefully he'll be able to join us shortly. All right, well, let's see where we are. Deborah, is there an impaired offer in this case? Yes, we did offer impaired. This case got stale. Um, it allegedly occurred in July of 2020, so we're coming up on a year. They had to wait for some blood test results and a warrant was requested and there was a problem with the affidavit and it was resubmitted. The defendant failed to appear for a couple of hearings um, in October of 2020 uh then the warrant got issued after that he didn't get arrested until march 5th and uh then mr nichols law firm and mr wickman got involved and he had some struggles even getting off the ground um so here we are uh what video are you referring to mr wickman thank you Ronner. it was the vehicle video uh what happened here was this was an accident and then the officers drove to the hospital and spoke yes. with Mike. And found him at the hospital. But was there a, vi a video from his vehicle? It was the video from the trooper's vehicle that captured the interviews with my client, Your Honor. Okay. 
and the uh, other family members who are present. And we received that last week and, and that's what's led us to, we were planning to set this for trial and I think we still could, but the only concern is that might, that video might give rise to a motion as well. All right, well, all right, I'm gonna video a trooper vehicle that statements of the defendant are on. So you think it's appropriate for pretrial motion? Correct, Your Honor. It's about the uh, legality of the blood draw itself. There were no SFSTs or uh, smell of intoxicants or anything like that. Um, percentage of the blood draw. There's a question about the consent with regards to such. All right. Well, we have these quite often. There's one firm locally that does a lot of these pretrial motions on cases. And um, so... I'm sure that happens everywhere. All right, rather than put it on our jury trial docket and let it languish, how about if I, you have 30 days to file a motion to suppress? Statements and or blood results. Once filed, we'll set it 30 days out from that so prosecutor can respond. We're dealing with a lot of old cases, which is regrettable, a lot of 2020 cases. And during COVID things got stalled and delayed and our court was always almost 100% in compliance with all our time guidelines, which was a point of pride for all of our four judges here. But COVID hit and it threw everything out the window for everybody. Um, we are doing everything, virtually everything with the exception of jury trials. Um, and we may be, we're going to start doing that with today's order from the governor. All right, I will take your representation as officer of the court. If you not understanding the process, excuse your client. I don't think he's a flight risk. He's contacted you and paid money to retain counsel. Uh, but you have 30 days to file the motion, and then we'll set it for hearing 30 days after that. It will probably almost certainly be virtual once again, um, but that's yet to be determined. Um, Ms. Davis, anything to add? Our offer will remain open so long as there is no other further criminal activity on behalf of the defendant and so long as there are no bond violations. Thank you. All right. Anything further, Mr. Wickman? Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, good luck, sir. I'll see you soon. Take care. Have a good day, everyone. Well, we're on the home stretch. Here's Alex Hill and Martin Montoya right on time. Good afternoon, Alex. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Nice to see you. Mr. Montoya is here with us, and Deborah uh, Davis is here. Um, Martin, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, this is file 202657. It's entitled People versus Martin Montoya. Did we have Vivian lined up for this? I thought we did. He may have his son with him who should be able to provide translation in a pinch. I just spoke to him using his son. I thought Vivian was here. Let's take a look. Confirmed Vivian. 
our last pretrial. I confirmed with her, so. Power outage. Yeah, she should be here shortly. Sounds good. We had a, for reasons I still don't understand, I think a squirrel bit a transformer or something. Uh, we lost power uh, three weeks ago on a Thursday. It wasn't even that hot. It was a pleasant enough day, and we chased our tails around for a while till they finally shut the courthouse down. And then about 30 minutes later, the power came back on, but that's generally how it works. So I stayed here as long as I could. It got too hot in here. I went home and mowed my lawn. But while we're waiting, well, I don't want to do anything that your client can't hear, understand. Uh, sure. I don't know if it would make sense for me to speak to Prosecutor Davis real quick, just to see if we fine. got something or... All right, let me put you guys in a breakout room and you guys can break out. Martin, I'm going to put you in the waiting room while we wait for the interpreter. Laura, would you call Vivian and confirm that we didn't lose her or maybe she's in transit or she's caught in another court? Here she is now.
Good afternoon once again, Vivian. Thank you for joining us again. No problem. Sorry for my little bit of lateness here. Well, I thought maybe you were just caught in another court, but we've been uh, utilizing our time. The lawyers were talking. I'm going to bring Martin back in. Okay. I just finished with uh, with the hearing, so. Well, that's what we assumed. Um, all right, I'll call the case. This is People versus Martin Montoya. File number is 202657. Voy a llamar el caso. Es el Ministerio Público versus Martin Montoya, número de caso 202657. Martin, with us is Vivian Montero, our interpreter. Martin, con nosotros es Vivian Montero, nuestro intérprete. You have met her before, and she's going to assist us once again today. Usted la ha conocido antes, y ella nos va a ayudar nuevamente el día de hoy. Ms. Montero, would you raise your right hand? <clears throat> Do you swear or affirm to the best of your ability you will translate, interpret these matters from Spanish into English and English into Spanish? I do. Senor Montoya is represented by Alex Hill. <clears throat> Señor Montoya tiene a representación por Alex Hill. Deborah Davis is here on behalf of the prosecuting attorney's office. Deborah <clears throat> Davis, la licenciada Deborah Davis está aquí por eh, el despacho de la fiscalía. Alex, I guess I'll defer to you first. What's our status here? No. ¿Cuál es el estatus aquí? The, the defendant's been in full compliance with all conditions. El demandado ha estado cumpliendo con todas las condiciones. Except he hasn't been able to finalize his anger management class. No ha podido finalizar su clase sobre el control de coraje. Um, but he has been going to AA. Pero sí ha asistido a A. And testing three times weekly. Y se somete a pruebas tres veces por semana. We're confident we're going to reach a resolution once he completes the anger management. Este, nos sentimos eh, que vamos a llegar a una resolución cuando él termina las clases de control de coraje. Um, but because this matter has been continued a while. Pero ya que este caso ha sido aplaza aplazado varias veces. We think it makes sense to just set it for jury trial. Creemos que tiene sentido fijarlo para una fecha, para un juicio. And, and move it up for a plea once we meet the conditions. Y adelantarlo para que él pueda dar su declaración cuando cumplimos con las condiciones. The Deborah, only thing today... Your, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Deborah, what's your thought on that? Eh, ¿Qué piensa usted, licenciada Deborah? Attorney Hill and I discussed all of that. Licenciado Hill y yo hablamos sobre todo esto. And I have no objection to simply setting it for the jury trial and giving him some time to complete that anger management class. Y no tengo problemas en fijar una fecha para el juicio ante un jurado, dándole tiempo para completar eh, las clases sobre el control de coraje. With him being on bond and the no contact lifted, he's got a lot riding on his cooperation. Este bajo fianza y que ya levantaron en la orden judicial de no tener contacto. Él tiene mucho pendiente en las condiciones a cumplir. All right, Deborah, who are the people's witnesses? Está bien, licenciada Débora. ¿Quiénes son los testigos para el Ministerio Público? We have. Tenemos. Officer Noel Jiménez. Oficial Noel Jiménez. Officer Sam Watson. Oficial Sam Watson. Claudia Veronica Vera Amores. Claudia Veronica Avera Amores. And I believe that is it. Y creo que eso es todo. Any motions? Algún pedimento. None expected for the people, Your Honor. No, no se prior, prior assault motion. 
el Ministerio offense. Público, su señoría. We may, or just simply use it as a judicial notice of the prior. Es posible que podemos utilizarlo como notificación judicial de, la, de lo anterior. Alex, do you have any witnesses you wish to call? Licenciado Alex, ¿tiene algunos testigos que debe llamar? We're just... Debe llamar? Sir. I'm sorry, the interpreter couldn't hear. We would just... We lost your feed, but I would note further. Right. I would reserve defendant's right. Quisiera conservar el derecho del acusado. And I would just note that there appears to be a letter in the file from the alleged victim. Y quiero que se tome en cuenta que hay una carta en el expediente de la supuesta víctima. That seems to indicate her desire for a non-prosecution que indica su deseo para no enjuiciamiento. All right, well, that doesn't carry the day. Eso no tiene que nada que ver con hoy día. Your Honor, with regard to bond conditions, if I may. Yes. Puedo hablar sobre las condiciones de la fianza, si puedo. In, in light of the more than 42, I believe, tests a la luz de los más de 42 pruebas. All clean without issue. Todos salieron limpios sin problema. The defendant, due to financial reasons, he spent more than $1,000 on testing already. Debido a razones financieras, el acusado ha gastado más de $1,000 sobre las pruebas ya. Would ask that the testing be reduced. Um, it's now three times a week. Se pide, se solicita que se reduce eh, la, el número de pruebas que ya están a tres veces a la semana. Uh, to either, um, or to weekly, one a time, vez, and at the demand of pro probation. A una vez a la semana y según lo exija libertad condicional. What's your thought on that, Deborah? ¿Qué piensa usted, licenciada Deborah, sobre eso? I understand it's a financial burden. Entiendo que es una carga económica. I have some concerns because the no contact was lifted and he's not living with the victim. Tengo algunas inquietudes porque ya no hay esa orden judicial de no contacto y él está viviendo con la víctima. But I am happy with the fact he's been testing regularly and attending AA. Pero estoy contenta que él se ha sometido a las pruebas al azar con regularidad y está asistiendo a A. Let me stop you, Deborah. All this is being done in an effort to keep the defendant from being deported. Eh, licenciada Deborah, todo eso se está haciendo en el esfuerzo de impedir que sea deportado el acusado. And I don't want to give him enough rope to slip up and harm himself. Y no quiero darle suficiente espacio para que él pudiera este perjudicar su situación aún más. But I am willing to reduce the testing to two times a week, which would still keep our hand in it, but reduce his expenditures by a third. Voy a entonces reducir las pruebas hasta dos veces por semana, que va a reducir los costos por un tercio para él. I think that's appropriate, Your Honor. Creo que eso es apropiado, su señoría. Mr. Montoya, do you understand? Señor Montoya, ¿usted comprende? Sí. Yes. All right, I'll notify the day reporting center. I still want you to test, and I still want you to test negative. Voy a notificar al centro de daily reporting center. Quiero, aún así, que usted sigue sometiéndose a las pruebas, y quiero que las pruebas salgan negativas. You have a lot writing on this. 
tiene mucho pendiente sobre todo esto. All right. Uh, anything further we should put on the record here? Algo más para constar en actas aquí? No, Your Honor. No, su señoría. All right. Nothing Thank for you. defending your act. Good to go. Alex, I don't know how soon we're opening the doors here, but maybe I'll see you in person at some point. Uh, Vivian, thank you once again for your I, I heard you. You're welcome, Your Honor. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Vivian. You're welcome. Hopefully see you soon, Your Honor. Take care. Okay. Thank you. I'll be here, I hope. All right. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Montoya. I'll remove you. All right. Uh, Christine is here and Julie Fetch is here. Christine, you don't know this, but one of your clients, uh, Justin Combs, got picked up on failing to appear on a methamphetamine PEC. Before we finish today, I'd like to do a polycom and get his case back on track. Uh, Ms. Fetch is here. And we've also got your motion regarding the bond. Uh, have you got that, Deborah? I did. Ms. Fetch, could you unmute your mic? Yes. Thank you. Let me give you a better name here. Okay. Um, these are two files. This is two files, there are two files. Anyway, there are two files in the matter of People versus Julie and Fetch. First file is 21957, and alleges two counts of domestic violence uh, that allegedly occurred on April 11th of 2021. One count is on Ralph Fetch, who is the defendant's father. The other is on GF, a minor child resident of that household. And file 211192, the defendant is charged with domestic violence on or about May 15th on her mother, Betty Fetch. The defendant is represented in all cases. I believe she's retained uh, by attorney Christine Yancey. Uh, our attorney Yancey also filed a motion to modify the bond conditions in this case. Last I know, Ms. Fetch was living in a motel room. Uh, Deborah, I'll start with you. What's our status here? Well, Your Honor, we don't have an offer for Ms. Fetch. Uh, there's been a continuing issue going on in that household. And so at this point, we don't have an offer other than as charged. On uh, all counts? Yes. All right, the bond motion, then let's talk about that. Well, first of all, Christine, what is your client's response to no plea offer? Well, Your Honor, we would proceed then at this point with trial and hope that we could work something out in terms of a resolution. Um, so as to that, and then I have my bond motion for the return to the home. My client is still residing in a, in a motel and is paying. All right, well, let's talk about these uh, the first incident in April would involve uh, several witnesses, the defendant's father, GF, and uh, Trooper Elizabeth Burgoyes. Deborah, anybody else? Your Honor, with that one, I believe there is another trooper in just a moment. So this is in the, I'm sorry, do you want to go with the first case? Yes, um, the April okay. case. 
So at the April case, the two victims, we also have Betty Jean Fetch and Deputy Joseph Hughes. Any motions or photographs or videos or anything else? There are some photos that were already provided to the defense. There may be some motions for prior behavior. All right, the next case, 211192, Edges of domestic violence on Betty Fetch on in May, uh, May two counts. Let's see. 192 is Betty. Got these mixed up. Who are your witnesses in that case? In that case, we have Trooper Elizabeth Burgoyes, Trooper Eric Iden, I-D-E-N, Betty Fetch, Ralph Fetch, and the minor, G-F. We may also have Jason Fetch as a witness. Same thing, any motions or exhibits? I believe there are photos and that one and potentially MVS. Um, and there will likely be a motion regarding prior behavior. All right. Um, Deborah, do you have any witnesses? I mean, Christine, other than the defendant, um, Your Honor, we would have the same witnesses that obviously the prosecution would have. But in the first file, we would have photographs and we have some medical records from a client. And I will get those to you, Miss Davis. All right, um, the bond motion is a difficult one. Christine, you filed a competent, well-noticed bond motion. I'm gonna quote from parts of it. Uh, the defendant has been arraigned and posted bond on these charges. Defendant has been residing in a motel room for the last month due to the bond conditions. Defendant's parents rely on her on transport for their medical appointments and errands. The defendant has given her parents power of attorney so they can take care of her son's schooling and medical appointments. Prior to being arraigned on the second count, the defendant and her mother, Betty Fetch, were having regular phone contact and had been relayed that Betty Fetch wants the defendant to return home and help her with her and her husband's needs. The adults that are the alleged victims in this case do not want to proceed with this case and want their daughter to return to the home. There's no testimony to that, but that's allegation. The defendant will abide by any conditions the court imposes on her if she's allowed to return to the home. The defendant cannot continue to afford to live in a motel during the pendency of this matter since she only receives disability as her only source of income. Uh, if this case were set for jury trial, it's last in line in about 59 cases. We took one away and then you added one. 
So a jury trial is not imminent and uh, no contact provisions cause hardship for people. But she's charged with assaulting her mother, her father, and her son on two different dates. Ms. Davis, do you have a response to the bond motion? Your Honor, this is a difficult one. However, when I look at the history of the incidents that have been reported out of that household, it's extremely concerning. And the facts of the most recent case uh, where she pulled a gob of hair out of her mother's head and it was found um, at the scene and the, the child crying and, and saying to his grandparents, you're not mad at me, are you? I wasn't the one that called the police this time. Listening to the 911 call of that child for the April case where he called in what was happening there and Miss Fetch, the defendant, getting on the phone and claiming, oh, no, no, nothing's wrong here, officer. No need for you to come. And then the officers go anyway and find what they find. I'm not comfortable with her being in that household if the the parents are not able to care for themselves and need her there. Her giving power of attorney to them over a child uh, is probably not the, the best case for any of the parties. And I, putting her back in the household doesn't seem like a good option. She knew that she had had police contact in April and then still a month later is got police contact again for assaulting her mother and throwing food around the kitchen, threatening to kill herself. I would hope that there's some mental health help that she's getting, but without some very concrete evidence of that and someone more professional than myself regarding mental health saying that she is not a risk to, to be back in the household, I don't believe that it's a safe situation for her to be there. So we would oppose the change of the bond conditions. All right. Now, Ms. Fetch, yes. I had indicated I had met your father over the years. He was a friend of Judge Noecker's. Mm -hmm. Judge Noecker was born in 1941, which would make your father about 80 or 81. Is your mother comparable in age? She's 84. Are there any other siblings available to help? Help my parents? No, there is not because there is not a relationship with um, the other siblings. I'm not certain that that's accurate based on some contact that we've had. All right. Um, have you had contact? Now the report or the motion indicates they want her back and they don't want to press charges. And as we discussed in an earlier case, it's not up to the complaining witness to decide whether to press charges. It's people of the state of Michigan. Dead people don't get to decide who's going to press charges and neither do any other complaining witness. It's up to the prosecutor. Um, but I'm concerned about the extent of these assault issues and the fact that they're alleged to be more than one and more than these two. Um, Your yeah. Honor, well, this, is a two, this is a two-edged sword. We're months away from any sort of a trial. Um, if she doesn't go back in the house, that's a problem. If she goes in the house, it's a problem. Um, and I didn't tell her to go stay in a motel. Uh, that's about the most expensive thing you can do, particularly when you have limited resources. The problem is it's hard to find housing right now. Um, you wanted to say something else, Deborah? I did, Your Honor. I just wanted to point out that one of the allegations is that after the May incident, 
when she was going to be taken to jail, she asked to speak to her father before she was taken from the scene and he agreed. And her immediate action was to get in his face and be inches from him and demand it to know if he was the one that called 911 aggressively and, and pressing her body up against him and him trying to turn away as he's crying and upset over this. And the troopers had to intervene. This is not very comforting to me to think that she realizes maybe she was in the wrong or maybe she acted inappropriately. Uh, and they're both saying this has been a period of years where there were other charges that ended up getting dismissed for non-cooperation of these same victims. And at this point, we have to do what we believe for the people is best. And it, that includes going forward with these charges. And again, if they keep saying that she needs mental health help, and I haven't seen anything to show that she has received that, that is a huge factor in whether we would consider consenting to her seeing them uh, unsupervised. And so again, at this point, we would ask that the court deny the bond motion. Well, the other side of the coin is there's no plea offer. So there's no inducement for her to try to seek a resolution. Um, perhaps that can continue. Uh, Ms. Fetch, I wish you didn't have to stay in a motel and hopefully you're looking for other housing, but I have the same concerns that Ms. Davis has. Christine, it's your motion. I'll give you the last word. Well, Your Honor, the only thing that I could offer in addition to what I've filed is maybe to, could, could Your Honor talk to the parents and see why they are stating they want her back and weigh it there? I mean- I'm uncomfortable doing that. Okay. Um, I'm getting I, in fact, from them. the prosecutor can do that, but I think they're drawing the line. The, they've been allegedly assaulted in the past and then declined to cooperate. And uh, they weren't charged with any sort of elder abuse, but there are situations where elder citizens are being dominated by their children uh, financially physically, emotionally, and they don't have the wherewithal to resist it. So I don't know, although I've been dealing with this family for several years now and have not found a solution to this. Um, but I agree with Ms. Davis, I'm reluctant to. So what I encourage the parties to do is to continue to work toward a resolution if we can get her off bond and on probation with some supervisory conditions regarding mental health treatment, no assaulted behavior, perhaps we can all be in the same house. Absent that, I'm reluctant to grant it. So the motion is denied. Thank you, Your Honor. Deborah, you don't need to stick around, but Christine, I'd ask you if you would, if I can get your other client in here. Ms. Fetch, yes. I understand there's not much wiggle room here. The prosecutor has made no plea offer and you are entitled to have a trial in front of a jury or a bench. One other option would be to set a bench trial in this matter, which would certainly expedite things. Christine, you can discuss that with her, uh, but we can't do a jury trial right now we're going to start, but it may be a while before we can get to your case. We're up to speed on every single thing except jury trials. Okay. Stutzman is going to attempt to do one next week. So the bond condition of no contact with your parents remains in effect. All right, so I've done an order to that effect. Uh, Ms. Fetch, stay in contact with your attorney. You've done a good job of that. Uh, yes, so I Perhaps find a more suitable housing if you could. 
All right. Um, Deborah, thank you for all your help this afternoon. It's been a long day. We're not quite done yet. Yes. All right, thank you. I'm gonna... Bradford. Hello, Deputy Bradford, Judge Middleton Collins. Sorry to bug you late in the day, but I need to see Justin Combs down at the Polycom room. All right, we will get on. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. I just sprung that one on you, Christine. If I had thought about it, I would have sent you an email earlier in the day. That's okay. We, we I've got the file pulled. Um, the only thing I was going to ask, is there other additional charges that brought him into custody, or was it just this warrant? I don't know. That's a good okay. question. Nobody told me anything otherwise, so let me see. I worked on this stuff before lunch, and then I had a meeting during lunch. I should have looked that up myself. Apparently just this. Okay. Your Honor, um, I guess I should probably check with the prosecutor. They had offered him a misdemeanor resolution on this, maybe. All right, well, Debbie, can you come back and help us? Still here. Mr. Nofsinger just walked in my office, but All right, we'll I can open the room, I guess, so uh, let him stay. Uh, Justin Combs failed to appear on a use of methamphetamine pre-exam conference. There apparently was a misdemeanor offer. Uh, is that still open? I guess it depends on why he didn't appear. So maybe we can hear what he has to say. And All right, let me stop the record. We're still on the live feed, and I'll restart it. They've shrunk up the feed from the jail. It's a little harder to see the defendant. But uh, good afternoon, Mr. Combs. This is Judge Middleton. This is People yeah, versus yeah. Justin. Michael Combs, 201574. Your lawyer, Christine Yancey, is here. I scheduled this at a time I knew she would be here, so you can thank her for being here. Also present is Deborah Davis. This is called a bench warrant arraignment. You were charged with a felony, uh, possession of methamphetamine, last year, and a pre-exam conference was set for August 18th. You failed to appear, you had made no contact with your lawyer, and you fell off the radar until you just got arrested again. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions. What's your current address? 
53493 in 40. Marcellus, Michigan, 49067. All right, so you didn't go anywhere. Um, where have you been? Uh, working mainly, but uh, I tried getting a hold of the lawyer a couple times, but with this COVID stuff, everybody was having a hard time getting any contact with anybody. Um, yeah, for a whole year, you just sort of disappeared. Miss Yancey's been in the same place every day, and so have I. Uh, how did you get picked up? I got pulled over for not having a plate on my truck over in Marcellus. I thought nobody in Marcellus had a plate. That's not very good. Uh, and when was that, last night? Uh, that was 60, almost 67 days ago. I've been 67? sitting in Cass County. Oh, you had Cass County charges? Okay. I should be careful, Judge Renfro, she's a Marcellus person uh so all right that adds a little something why were you in the cass county jail uh, i got picked up on a couple different charges and uh the hold for here driving on suspended all right are your cass county cases done I'm actually going to be getting a hold of the probation when I get out of here for Cass County. All right. So did you enter a plea in Cass County? Yes. To what? Uh, possession as well as attempted concealed weapon. Which judge were you in front of? Uh, Herman. Okay, so it was a circuit court case. And you haven't been sentenced yet? No, I have not. I'm not on PR bond or not. I'm uncomfortable trying to cop a plea right here without knowing more. I'm going to set a pre-exam conference for Christina's next Tuesday too soon, or Deborah. I mean, that's fine for just a uh, PD. In the regular scheme of things, the pre-exam conference would be set for the 30th of June. And I guess, just to clarify, did he plead to a possession of meth felony over there? Yes. Okay. So at this point, we would still offer a use in our case if you wanted to accept it today, and if your honor wanted to set sentencing out to see what happens in Cass County with the possession. Well, there's I'll a couple issues. That. Uh, that could affect his sentencing guidelines on his felony charge in Cass County and affect their recommendation. So, um, well, it shouldn't because he wouldn't have the conviction until. All right. Well, do you want to discuss that with him, Christine? Yes, I can do that. All right. Let me. Is that what you believe, Deb? I mean, it would be the conviction would be after his. Right. I just I mean, I don't think he would be 7411 eligible. So if that was something he was trying to get over there. <laughs> OK. All right, Deborah. Thank you for sticking around. You thought you were done. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Luke is sitting here, just I'll, smug over here in the corner. <laughs> All right, you can talk to Luke for a minute while All we right. uh, wait. That's All right, I, I will be on and just waiting. All right. <laughs>
Well, we started right at eight and we'll finish about a quarter to five. Christine, this might take 60 seconds. Okay. He wants to accept the offer, Your Honor, and he said that they did not offer him 7411. That was part of his deals. He just had to plead straight up to the possession. Okay. His I'm inclined sentence, to just do a straight jail. His sentence is set for when? Seven, uh, July 23rd. And he has to get out. When he gets out, he has to contact his probation officer there to do his PSI. Twenty four seconds. Your clock is right twice a day at noon and midnight. I changed it around a little bit because you're the only one that notices my clock. It, it, it was like at three or two thirty or something. It's right like twice a day. Yeah. Yeah. Just like me, I'm right at least twice every day. Mr. Combs, uh, you've had yes, an opportunity sir. to talk to your lawyer. The prosecutor, Ms. Davis, has offered the original plea offer that you would plead to use of methamphetamine. Use of methamphetamine is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to, I believe, two thousand dollars. I don't believe it continue. I don't believe it requires a suspension of your license anymore. The felony charge of possession of methamphetamine would be dismissed. Other than that, did anyone promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No. Or threaten you? No. Do you understand that if you plead to this charge, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury? There will be no trial. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand that. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. If you had an attorney, I mean, if you didn't, if you couldn't afford an attorney, we would appoint one for you at county expense. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to take the witness stand and testify on your own behalf, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, 
and the judge or jury cannot hold your silence against you. And you have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand? Yes, I do. Okay. On this date, which was a while ago, your excuse about not showing up is pretty lame, but let's go back to last July. Did you get pulled over here in St. Joe County and have some methamphetamine in your possession? Yes, I did. Had you used some? Yes, I had. All right. You're right. Things were a little bit uncertain during COVID period, but by July of last year and by August, we had things under control. Uh, we were meeting regularly. We were doing pre-exams. The only rough time was really in March, April, and maybe early May. We got Zoom up and we resumed all of our business. So you were just bouncing around and relapse there. I'm going to order 90 days jail, credit 67. You get five days a month good time, which would be about 75 days. So you're going to do a few more days uh, concurrent with your Cass County case. I'm going to say I got court on my Cass County case for sentencing on the 23rd. Of July or June? July. Yeah, you'll be out before then. Um, 67 days in jail has done some good things for you. Helped you get your head on straight. Uh, yeah, and no, I gotta get it. Thinking clearly. And, uh, all right, I'm gonna waive the fines. I'm not gonna chase you around. Judge Herman is most likely to put you in either specialty program or some other sort of probation. There's no sense doing that here also. Um, does anybody have any additional comment? No, Your Honor. No, All Your Honor. Right. The only no. thing I was going to ask if you'd consider just time served, because he is going to have to do his appointment with his probation officer for his PSI. He can spend a few days here. He didn't do one day here except a bit, so he'll get our hospitality for about eight more days, although your proposal does make sense. All right, I'm going to release uh, the defendant and I'm going to ask you guys a question. Is it just me or is there a guy that looks exactly like him in a room behind him? <laughs> Why did they zoom out so much? They need to I don't know, but with the way, with the way, like we're gonna the, have way the to reflection have is you could see this and it looks like somebody that looks just like him back to back. Well, and didn't they, the, a twin defense theory was oh, that yes. guy. It was that guy, not me. Um, yeah. Didn't they used to be able to push the button too to get back in from the breakout room? That I think they took that away from him too. Well, I don't know. He came in before 60 seconds was up. Hmm. I've had some real difficulty with the Department of Corrections, um, either putting somebody in the waiting room or putting them in a breakout room. Um, then one guy said, "This if it doesn't work, call the warden. So we didn't do too well. I'm sure they're just waiting for our call for them to go run down to the hey, or technical. Hey, could you go push the rejoin button? Right. Okay. Getting a little punchy here at the end of this long day. All right. Well, the good okay. news is we resolved that case in a short yeah. uh, hearing for both of you. No further uh, dealing with it. He can deal with his Cass County matters. So, Christine, thank you for doing it on short notice. And, Deborah, thank you for sticking around. No problem. To resolve that case in an efficient manner. All right. We'll be in recess. We have another busy day tomorrow. And uh, thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, Your Honor. Take care. Parade tonight. Right. Okay. Oh, thanks. yeah. The parade in Three Rivers. Oh. I think it's my one night that we don't have crap going on after work. So, I think it's going to. Guess what? You're in my gardens and, you know, hang out. Okay. All right. Have a, Thanks. Have a good one, guys. See ya. All right. Uh, we will end our live feed and end our day.